All right. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you are called in and you're on the line, please hit mute on your phone. Um, your, everything you say and do at your desktop, people can hear, so that's a fair warning. Um, we will be recording this webinar as well, so make sure you hit that mute button. We want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, this is the second type of webinar we're doing to discuss advancing R3 in this upcoming year. We initiated a webinar like this last January, and through feedback on our surveys and discussion with our community, we realized that this is a great vehicle for uh, the Council to Advance Hunting and the Shooting Sports and our staff to connect with the R3 community and relay the projects and opportunities we are working on and can share with the rest of you in the upcoming year. So throughout this presentation, you'll hear three different people presenting. You'll hear Cyrus Baird, the Council's Director of Programs. You'll hear myself, Samantha Petter, Director of Business Development. And you'll hear Marty Hogan, Manager of the R3 Community and a contractor with Patahook, Inc. Um, as we move forward, please type your questions in the bottom right-hand corner. We'll be able to address those at the end. There will be time for questions, and we look forward to engaging with you and hearing what you have to say. And so we're going to start with a little bit of an overview of the organization. And the reason we're doing that is we constantly see new faces joining us through our webinars and the R3 community. And we realize that there's a constant balance of information we have to share with you. If you're not familiar with the Council to Advance Hunting in the Shooting Sports, um, our council purpose is to ensure support for and active participation in hunting and the target shooting sports for future generations. Our vision is an America where hunting and the shooting sports are an integral part of mainstream culture and where hunters and shooters are widely recognized as premier conservation contributors. Our tactical on-the-ground mission is to facilitate the promotion and growth of hunting and the shooting sports and to offer education to the public on the contributions that hunters and shooters make towards wildlife conservation. For us, those important points within our mission statement are words like facilitate, promotion, and growth, and then the word advance in our namesake. We use those to drive our on-the-ground activities and foster the sense of learning around R3 and advance it forward, and that's what we'll continue to do in 2018. Our staff is small but mighty, as I advance the slide here. Um, we only have two uh, full-time staff with the council, Cyrus and myself. Our CEO and president is John Frampton. And we, constant, we often partner with Matt Dunphy from Wildlife Management Institute on our three workshops, presentations, and the community management. And then Mar Marty, again, is a contractor with us to help manage our three community through Powderhook, Inc. So some background on the council itself. We've been in existence since 2009. Um, the current staff sapling equivalent of two people uh, has been around for two and a half years now. And over that almost 10 year time span now, we've really ramped up and en engaged our reach and our impact we feel on R3 and on achieving our mission and values. So uh, we hope that as we go through this presentation and share the different aspects of what we've accomplished and what we see coming at us and the opportunity for you all to engage with us, that you'll have some ideas on how we can continue to partner with you and be effective. And so when we say advancing R3, we mean a couple different ways. I said facilitate, promotion, growth, and advance are all keywords for us. We look to this for a few different reasons, um, from spending time on the ground to build partners' capacity, to educating and engaging a larger audience on the topic of R3 and highlighting our partner's success, and to provide a virtual platform to foster continued learning, discussion, and understanding for the growing profession each time we engage in an activity in one of those areas, we're advancing R3, and that's what it means to us. So I'll start by sharing some of the back, backward looking, where we, where we are and how we got here, and Cyrus will expand upon our external communications, and Marty will provide the content on the R3 community. And if you're familiar and have been following along with the council, you'll know that we started offering a lot of R3 workshops with the Wildlife Management Institute. Um, our first one was in Iowa in 2016, which was a little over 15 months ago. And what, we've real, what we started doing then was a series of workshops on the topic of R3 with a bunch of different states. We received a multi-state conservation grant from the Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies to execute up to 10 workshops uh, throughout the country on the topic. Through these workshops, we provide a background on what R3 is and work with the staff and the agency and sometimes stakeholders, too, 
to develop a common ground and a common understanding of what R3 is, and then spend some time strategizing and identifying the next steps that that organization can take to embark on the R3 journey. With the states across the country, we've been in Iowa, Maine, Missouri, Texas, Kentucky, Utah, and Virginia, and we'll be heading to Alaska and West Virginia in the coming weeks. And we've also had the opportunity recently to start working with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and offering R3 workshops to their staff as well. So as far as when we say on the ground, this is truly what we mean. We're there to facilitate and learn with our stakeholders as they grow their R3 strategy. We've also spent a lot of time over the last year developing a lot of products. If you joined us for a webinar in July uh, last year, you would have seen the resources of videos and handouts and updates to our R3 community, all trying to better the experience online and get the right information to the R3 coordinators so that they can do their job to advance R3 on the ground. And if you're in this webinar, you're probably familiar with a number of the other ones that we've offered over the years. We're up to about 15 now, and our engagement and viewership continues to grow. So we're very excited um, that you all have joined us today for the next iteration of this one. So uh, it looks like our screen's freaking out there a little bit. So amongst those products, um, if you have any questions about them or where to find them, you can go on the R3 community and find them on the resource list uh, index there is under the featured topics. You'll be able to access all of these products that we provided to you. And that community is one of our greatest strengths, we feel, uh, from the counselor's perspective in engaging with people and in advancing R3. Um, Marty, if you'd like to share some ideas about the R3 community and where where we've seen it grow and expand on that, we'd greatly appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Sam. Um, so the Arthur Creek community has <clears throat> kind of blossomed into um, a really awesome, awesome resource um, and surpassed any expectations we originally had when we first started um, two years ago on it. Um, we had planned, you know, maybe to hit about 300, 400 of uh, the industry's most influential people in R3 and trying to get them um, <clears throat> uh, just all in the same place talking about the same thing. Um, and just real quick before I jump into that, here's a quick um, slide just showing you um, kind of a, an addition to the, to the R3 site. We, we uh, added in uh, the council's logo in the top left-hand corner, and you can also access the council's website on there. So just to make it really easy for you guys. Um, but anyways, um, so yeah, we we originally had a plan of about you know 300, 400 people in the community, and uh, we made a goal for July of 2017 to hit a thousand people, which um, was a huge stepping stone for us. And we did a, a kind of a a launch party with some new materials uh, that, that we offered to you guys and some videos and whatnot. But um, yeah, so we, we set a new goal for, to get about 1,500 uh, members by the symposium coming up here this spring, um, which we're on track to do. We're, we're at about 1,300, um, and that's grown 44% uh, just from last May, just from May of 2017. So a huge increase, um, and that's due to you guys, you know, spreading the word about the community and, you know, making sure the right people are getting in there and uh, participating. Um, we have 374 active members. Um, we're looking to ramp that up. Um, we're not, after we hit this goal of about 1,500, we're going to really focus on uh, the content within the community and getting people to, you know, talk to each other, really share share ideas, and, uh, and just really get engaged. Um, and our, our users are really uh, engaged in, they c keep coming back for more information. So 86% return uh, the next month to, you know, you know come in and see what's, what people are posting and what new stuff's going on. Um, here are just some of the <clears throat> statistics within it. Uh, we get about almost 500 post clicks a week. Um, that's up a little bit from last May. Uh, our contribution rate has gone down a little bit just because new people are coming in. Uh, we've seen that people are a little more timid uh, as they first enter the community and kind of open up and engage more as the um, as they get more comfortable with with um, the platform and the people within it. Um, 
So we also have um, a lot of YouTube views, um, which ha we've really ramped up our uh, YouTube, trying to uh, not monetize it, but just kind of um, get the most out of it, I guess you, you will. But um, we, we saw a 231% increase in YouTube views, 141% increase in the minutes. Um, podcast listens, they were up 36%. Um, and then our emails, which you can see on the left side is the benchmark for our online community category. And then you can see our statistics. So uh, we're still above that benchmark. Um, we're still looking to maybe get those numbers a little bit better here going forward. And we have some ideas for that. That I'll explain later. But okay. back to you, Cyrus. Yeah, so there's kind of two prongs to uh, uh, our communication efforts at the council. Um, Samantha and Marty do a, a really good job of communicating within the community um, and, and catering to, to the needs of those inside the R3 community. Um, I've focused a lot of my efforts the last year basically taking what we do at the council and what we do within the R3 community and digesting it a little bit and putting it into a format where uh, the average hunter or the average sportsman on the outside looking in can understand. Um, so part of that effort is we uh, took on the task to update our website and bring it into this century. Um, and this just illustrates kind of what we were working with before. Um, very, very plain and, and boring. Um, we weren't able to highlight our partners' successes and uh, the successes in the R3 community um, to the level that which we would like with the website that we had. Um, so we worked with a website designer and made something a little bit more flashy, a little bit easier to use and easier to navigate. Um, it highlights our board and, like I said, our partners' R3 successes pretty well now. Um, and we're, we're seeing our website become the go-to place for information about R3 um, on the outside looking in. Obviously, again, the, the R3 community site will continue to be um, the go-to place for insider information, uh, but we do want to maintain a level of contact with the outside community as well. Um, one of the, the most popular pages on our website is this R3 coordinators page. Um, I know Samantha just posted about it a couple days ago. If you haven't been on it, it's a really great resource. It, it's got the name and contact information of, of every R3 coordinator um, hovered over the state that they're in. Um, it also gives you a kind of um, process or how far along each state is in, in the R3 process, whether or not they've hired a coordinator, if they've developed their own state plan, if they've hosted a workshop, kind of where they are in, in that stage. Um, so it gives you a good idea of where different states are throughout the country. Um, and we've also used it to um, promote and uh, advertise for all of the different R3 job postings that we've had over the last year or so. Um, and we, we want to continue doing that. So if if anyone has uh, upcoming positions that become available, just let us know. We'd love to put it on the website and help you promote it on, on our social media channels. Um, and speaking of which, we again, we, we really want to just take your message and spread it through our channel. Um, we don't really come up with a lot of original content, more so than we like to highlight what our partners are doing. Um, but some of the thing, themes that we like to hit on when we, when we do talk about R3 is the uh, aspect of mentoring um, and the contribu contributions hunters make towards conservation. Um, we highlight um, movements like the locavore movement, and we, we try to hit on kind of the heartstrings of the opening day and the traditions of hunting um, and uh, try to reach people through that message. And these are just some of the examples that we've used um, this is actually a meme that, that we ran. I ran an ad on on our Facebook page leading up to the week of Iowa's uh, pheasant opener um, with a link uh, to Iowa's DNR 
um, their website, and it did extremely well. Um, here's another one, just simple message, take a friend, make a hunter. And this one I thought was funny too. So um, some of our top line metrics, I just included Twitter in here uh, because that's the medium in which I like to use the most. Um, but if you combine all of our social media platforms, we're reaching somewhere in the upwards of 175 to 200,000 people a month. Um, and again, that's, that's 200,000 people getting the message of the state fish and wildlife agencies, the conservation partners, the industry leaders um, in all of their R3 successes. So we want to continue to do that. And um, we hope that, that by highlighting your successes um, and partnering with you, that we'll both uh, grow um, in our online space. Um, so, Sam, is this you? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Cyrus. Uh, a common theme that we have uh, in doing all of our presentations and in, in our efforts and engaging and trying to strategize in what we're doing, so continue to come back and say, what impact are we having? Um, with a small staff and limited resources, we always have to be precise and accurate and try to have the big, greatest and most efficient impact we can. So when we were pre Setting up for this presentation, uh, we started looking around, and we've seen a lot of traction develop over the last couple, even weeks, we'll say. And R3 is hitting this burgeoning point. Um, the, the topic, the ideas, everything is growing. And we can see that through a number of different ways, which I'm going to share with you now. So this is a screenshot of that page that Cyrus talked about on our R3 website, or on the council website, sorry where we list the job postings. And we also try to keep as much up to date as possible on where the R3 coordinators are, who has workshops. Um, if you visit the page, you'll see that there's a drop down now, and you'll be able to sort through who has a coordinator on staff, who's hosted a workshop, and who's released a plan. And we track this, because we're, we're doing our, our duty to show the progression. And um, what we sense is that this is one of the fastest movements happening in the conservation world. We're just trying to document that and also provide a source of information to help partners understand where states are in their progression as well. So this, again, is in early 2017. We can see maybe 17 different R3 coordinators on staff um, of varying magnitude. And there were some were partner positions, some were hired um, through the state agency, some were hired even like in Michigan through a university. And what we've seen since uh, just this, literally this week, this is the most up-to-date it's been, we see that we had to zoom a map out because Alaska hired an R3 coordinator. And I think he's on here today. But we have over 30 different R3 coordinators sitting in the position. We also know that the new trend for state agencies is to not have one, just one R3 coordinator, but a team of R3 coordinators now. We see this in Wisconsin where they have a position with NWTF and Pheasants Forever, and then also the agency. We see this happening in Arizona, Iowa, Nebraska. Um, it's a trend that's going on, and those are the types of trends that we like to track. Um, let alone having 30 positions but in the seats right now, we, have, we know four other states are working on a position right now, and we'll be announcing that job announcement in the coming two weeks. We also know that there are about four or five additional positions for states being hired in the coming weeks. Um, that is some growth. That is monumental because we're hitting now 35 different states coming up the next month or so that we'll have people. And that's a huge opportunity. We're hitting at that critical capacity. And we really think that opportunities exist ahead for us, especially this year, to capitalize and, and advance this profession forward. Another trend that we're seeing, you might have noticed the difference between, say, early 2018 and early 2017 is that partners aren't listed on this map. And that's because there wasn't a lot of partner R3 coordinators. But what we're seeing is the addition of a national R3 coordinator for our partner organization. NWTF is hiring a specific person in the coming weeks. Mule Deer Foundation hired Trish Engel. Archie Trade Association has identified Josh Gold. And Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever have hired Courtney Schaefer. These positions bring that national perspective there. And they can assist us as a partner specifically the council, to stay aware, aware of all the trends and the evolving needs and really be more tactical on how we work with you guys to advance our training for the coming year. So this is all great progress, and we just 
think is a great illustration of the, the progression that we're making. We also have some cool trends going on on the um, R3 strategy and state plan side. We have two states that have now released their state plan, state level plans. Um, the one on the left is Iowa. They released theirs in early or late November last year in 2017. That was number two official document released since we started with the National uh, Hunting and Shooting Sports Action Plan in 2016. On the right, what you'll see is the Georgia Hunting and Action Plan for fall 2017. This is actually the second iteration of Georgia's action plan. And what Charles has done is gone through and started identifying the changes. So we have progression being made there as well. People are refining their strategies and finding different ways um, to attack R3 at the state level. We're also being reported back um, some outcomes of these efforts. And these are specific examples from Iowa. Um, we had our second R3 summit there where they brought in their partners for the second time around and had about 100 different people in the room from across our partner organizations. And uh, our wildlife bureau chief, this is uh, from coming from Iowa staff, as an example of an outcome of that event. It says, our wildlife bureau chief has joined forces with Jamie and Pheasant Forever to open up an additional 50,000 acres of IHAP, private land open to public hunting. Um, I've been corrected that that's 15,000. 50,000 is the overall goal, but 15,000 is initial um, change that's happened. And we know that access is a critical component of our three strategy. So to have this conversation uh, occur after the R3 summit and have that impact is a great testament to engaging new partnerships and new divisions and breaking down those silos and actually advancing the participation rates for hunting and target shooting. We also see that um, new partnerships are being forged that span more than one partner type. Neil Smith Wildlife Ref Refuge, which is through the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, has partnered with Pheasants Forever, Iowa State University, and the Iowa DNR to host a mentored pheasant hunt between students who currently hunt and brand new student hunters on the refuge. They will meet a couple times prior to get familiar with firearms and shoot trap at our shooting range. And this is just a great example of all the things, R3, that we, we want to see happen. We see partnerships that span multiple entities. We see mentoring. We see target audiences and trying new audiences to engage with. And we see multiple exposure over time. These are the things we're working for. So anecdotal evidence like this is helpful for us to know that uh, we're on the right track. And so Cyrus, as he said, he's been working in, uh, one second, sorry. He's been working on to get the message on the outside. And I think he's done a great job and he's finally getting some attention from multiple entities that we're pretty excited about. So Cyrus, do you want to share on that? Yeah, I was just going to add, uh, you know, speaking of kind of the themes that we're seeing, and one of the themes is that, you know, we are getting the message out there and, and uh, it is a message that people um, want to hear. And, um, just in the last probably month and a half, we've had um, a lot of national uh, attention, media attention specifically, um, on R3 and on what uh, the council is doing and what the individual states are doing and what different NGOs are doing. Um, and so we're happy to help spread that message. Um, and this is just an example of, of um, um, an um, interview that I did with NRA TV a while back. Um, about mentoring, about kind of the decline of uh, hunting um, and what it means to conservation. Um, so looking forward, how, how can we take some of these things that we learned in the last year and help advance R3 in 2018? Um, one thing that we, we do want to touch on is uh, something that we hope everyone has looked at already. Um, several of the people um, on this webinar right now are quoted in this. Um, we were quoted uh, a few times, and um, I'm referring to obviously the Outdoor Life uh, article on R3 and the decline of hunting. Um, we were able to meet with Outdoor Life's uh, staff at SHOT Show and talk about basically their feedback that they got after they published this, um, where they see editorial-wise going from here, um, and what you can expect to see kind of in their writing um, on any follow-up information on this. And um, we'll just say that it won't be a one and done, that they're, they're hoping to make an entire uh, year-long series out of kind of what you saw in this initial February-March issue. Um, 
And speaking of SHOT Show as well, we hosted a, a, a press conference with the National Wild Turkey Federation in Mossy Oak talking about strategic partnerships um, and what we can do in that space to advance our three efforts. Um, and we actually live streamed it. Uh, it was a kind of a last minute decision, uh, but it's been viewed over, I think, close to 20,000 times now, which is crazy because it was off my really crappy iPhone 5. Um, and so, again, we're, we're really happy to take this message and, and help um, deliver it to a national level. Um, quick shift uh, um, in topics, I do want to talk about our efforts uh, to help modernize the Pivot Robertson Act, which will help state fish and wildlife agencies with their R3 efforts. Um, I'm sure that it, I've, you've heard me talk about it in another webinar at some conference. Um, essentially, it is a piece of legislation that will allow uh, state fish and wildlife agency directors to use portions of their PR dollars for recruitment and retention and reactivation efforts. Um, so there is a, a, a bill on the House and Senate side right now, and we're working closely with uh, AFWA, uh, Archer Trade Association, and the Congressional Sportsman's Foundation to help basically educate the community and lawmakers on, on why this is a worthwhile endeavor. Um, but the key takeaways here, again, is it would allow state fish and wildlife agency directors to use portions of their 4B money um, for R3 activities. Um, it would also take an additional $5 million from the current existing archery excise tax and place that into the multi-state grant pot to be used exclusively for regional and national level R3 projects. So if, if your state agency or your NGO or, or whoever has been looking to um, partner with some people on uh, some more regional and national level R3 projects that have been lacking the funding, um, this would basically give you an additional $5 million to apply for every year, and it's earmarked exclusively for R3 activities. So we think it's a pretty worthwhile piece of legislation, and, and uh, we hope to see it move through um, this Congress. Sam, Marty? Yeah, so uh, in terms of the community going forward this, <clears throat> this year, um, we really want to focus on content, engagement, and the conversations that are going on. Um, one, one way that we're going to try and, you know, hone in on the content is we're going to send out a survey probably here within the next month or so, um, just asking what you guys are looking for this year, uh, just kind of getting a feel of where most of the community is at in terms of the resources that you need, resources that would help, or um, even providing resources to those ones, you know, just coming up, uh, just getting started. So um, we're going to focus on uh, content there. Um, in the in the next month, I'm going to put together a couple of um, targeted email campaigns, more 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 of just a targeted email list. So um, we're going to try and you know get our lapsed users, people that haven't been been on the website in a in a month or so. We're going to try and get them more engaged. Um, we're going to send out an email specifically for them. Um, we may we may make a campaign just for webinar attendees. Maybe try and get some discussions around different webinars after they take place. Um, and then uh, a no-brainer is just to get all of our most engaged users into a list and really um, push certain topics, certain uh, post articles that we really want some really good uh, in-depth conversation on, and just kind of. Um, putting it out there and letting them know that, hey, we, we could use some engagement on this post here. Um, also, a, another goal for 2018 is to try and get people to, uh, to download the Mighty Networks app. Um, this allows for more push notifications, more real-time kind of content viewing. Um, you know, people probably aren't going home and uh, getting on the R3 community, so just getting push notifications to your phone can, you know, keep people engaged and keep people uh, in the know. So uh, other topics we're going to tackle in 2018, um, <clears throat> we're going to focus on, you know, creating some resources and some more webinars around uh, evaluation of R3 efforts. Um, we know that's a big one that people have been wanting some more resources and uh, 
knowledge on. So we've done a couple uh, here recently on evaluation, but you can expect probably some more coming in 2018. Um, the other thing is, like Cyrus kind of mentioned uh, earlier with social media and whatnot, uh, we want to kind of engage the Orange Army a little bit, start putting out materials and uh, content that, you know, the Orange Army is can understand and will digest and will, you know, educate other people that may may not be in the Orange Army. So really trying to engage them will be uh, huge moving forward. Uh, and that outdoor life piece, that's a great start. You know, stuff like that is going to be is going to be big for uh, getting this movement really rolling. But um, and then the other thing we want to do is just work with our partners to increase content. You know, getting some more uh, standardized how-tos or documents or uh, handouts, wh whatever it is, we want to work with them uh, just to get a, a really good set of, um, of content uh, relative to everybody. So that's what you can look forward to uh, in the R3 community in 2018. Awesome. Thank you, Marty. And so between the Pittman-Robertson Act and or Pittman-Robertson Modernization Act, uh, the increased attention and engagement with industry partners, and the continued growth and facilitation of the R3 community. Um, we want to keep going and advancing and growing those efforts. We feel that's where our role is, and the feedback and the evaluation that we've done on everything to this point has really supported those different concepts. Um, the final thing that you probably have heard about and you will continue to hear about from us for the next six months is the National R3 Symposium. We've been working on R3 now since fall 2016. T technically, that's when the National R3 Plan, or National Hunting and Shooting Sports Action Plan was released. However, the group that was working on that document was convened in late 2013. And since that period in time, there has been a call for a national symposium. And what, at this event, what you can expect is uh, attention and discussion to advance the recruitment, retention, and reactivation conversation. Um, we have a video that we'd like to share. We've uploaded and tested it a number of times. We just want to make sure that it plays for y'all. So we're going to bring that up one second so you can hear and see what we are setting the tone for this event as and why we want you to be there. In America, sportsmen and women are at the heart of wildlife conservation. And it's buffering while it does that. Hunters and right if we had even if you upload and plan ahead, it still shows that. Well, it buffers. Um, this event and reasons why you should be there. This will be the first premier event addressing the topic of R3 for the entire community. Um, it's for hunting, angling, boating, and target shooting. In America, sportsmen and women are at the heart Beautiful of wildlife life. conservation. Hunters, anglers, boaters, and target shooters are vital in sustaining. Okay, we'll post the link where you can find the video. Okay, we'll post the link where you can find the video. Hold on one second. Okay, there we go. Um, we'll post the link, Marty, if you can grab that link so everyone can see it. Uh, then we'll be able yep. to have people view that. Um, this event, like I was saying, will be the first premier event that tackles the topic of R3 across the four different areas of outdoor rec recreation, hunting, target shooting, angling, and boating. We're catering this event to target attendees from NGOs, non-government organizations, state fish and wildlife agencies, as well as our federal component, and also the industry. And the topics that we're tackling here are things that span those audiences and are topics that we can drive forward and engage people from all aspects of that community that I described to really advance our three. So one of the key questions we get about this event is who should attend? And the answer to that is anyone with a vested interest in increasing participation in outdoor recreation. This would include the CEO, director, or president of the company. It would also include the R3 coordinator, as well as any marketing, communication, and IT professionals that have that vested stake 
in R3 for their organization. Um, we're also looking at anyone who actively works on R3, so from our state chapter president that's really involved, say, in NWCF strategy, to a colleague or a, a retailer for Cabela's, say, that can uh, take some of this content home. We're trying to develop the greatest minds and, and attract those people to the same location. Because at this event, it's not going to be more so focused on re program report out. We're more so setting up an agenda and a plenary um, that tackles a tough subject. What we've done is formed a committee and of representatives from across the audience that we described, um, of leaders and also uh, on the ground R3 coordinators, to identify topics that need to be addressed and move forward for R3 to be successful. Three of those topics specifically include mentoring and engaging the Orange Army, or the, the Lay Hunter, as they say, and the Blue Army, too. Marketing in R3, and what do we do about that and trying to figure that out. And then also data, research, and evaluation. Um, those are three areas where we need to expand. You guys have told us where we need to expand and that our committee has pr uh, prioritized. So we'll have a lot of content in that discussion um, to move forward. The second day is where we're asking you all to come and roll up your sleeves and help us lay out some of the ideas. There'll be facilitated conversations in the morning on two topics, one on um, 21st century business practices and how to engage that in R3 and in our organization. And different ideas will be identified that we can take action on. And then the second topic um, will be on expanding partnerships across the audiences and across the community. And trying to use an example that we refer to of the trying to facilitate partnerships such as the one that came from the Iowa workshop where we had the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, a state university, the DNR, and a, a Pheasants Forever, an NGO, all working together collaboratively to advance our three. We know we need more of that, and so we're going to host a discussion on that for an hour and a half to dive down in and understand what we need to do to get that done. So this, this event and why you need to be there, if you want our free to advance and if you want to be a part of that solution, we want to see you in Lincoln. And we encourage you to check out the agenda on our R3 web, or the, the council's website, which Cyrus posted there. You can also find the video at the YouTube link uh, Marty provided. The agenda is now posted. Um, we'll be marketing the event in the coming weeks and announcing the speakers. And if you have any questions on that event, you can reach out to either Cyrus, Marty, or I, and we'll definitely try to help you figure that out. As well, registration for the event should be open mid-February. We'll let you know through the R3 community and through our other communication channels. And we hope that you can take some time and join us uh, to make sure that this event is truly what we need it to be to advance R3 in 2018. And so we've given you a lot of content. And we were cautious on going too deep into the details on what we've done and where we're going. But what we really want to have for the last 20 or minutes or so is some discussion with you. These are where our ideas are. We have the topics we need to work on. We know that we need to continue to manage our resources and our communication efforts better and expand on those, and we intend to do that. We also intend to work with the industry and incre increase our relationships with them. But if you all have some ideas or questions that you'd like to post to us, I see a couple here, too, that we can address. Um, we'd like that last part of this com conversation to be that, a conversation, and help us know what you need to be more successful in your efforts in 2018. And so I see a question here from Nancy Doran. Do you have a template we can use to develop our state plan? Is it your strategic plan, or is it better to contact the other states who have developed statewide plans and have to potentially use their plan? And that's a great question, Nancy. Um, I would like to offer this answer, and then Marty and Cyrus, feel free to tap into it, too. Uh, we, we don't recommend just uh, copying a plan. Um, the process to develop your plan and your strategy on R3 is a, a process that takes a couple months. You should engage stakeholders and partners in this effort um, to build that comprehensive buy-in. So it's not necessarily um, copying and pasting. It's more so the development of it. And that, that said, a workshop, like we've worked with many states to develop those, uh, highlight those ideas and give you a starting point. Other states now have put their ideas to paper that you can use to Define, develop your idea and help you understand what you might, which path you might go down. And, and if you're looking to do both hunting and target shooting, um, as well as fishing and boating, the National Hunting and Shooting Sports Action Plan is available on the R3 community. That's a great guiding document. It has all the threats identified, which you can use kind of as a smorgasbord to maybe pick the topics to address. 
And then the best recommendations that RBFF, Recreational Boating Efficiency Foundation, recently published is also a very great useful tool to help you on that side of the equation. So I hope that answers your questions a little bit. Um, use them as reference documents, the other state plans, and then we can talk about the process if you, you'd like to work through that with your state. And then there's a question from Stephen Sowell from Alaska. Uh, Samantha, in addition to the National Symposium in May in Nebraska, what other events or workshops are taking place this spring and summer that states should consider attending? Um, that's a good question. The National Archery Symposium is, is the one that we're focusing on and, and engaging at. There are your regional workshops. Uh, Cyrus and I attended the, the WAFWA workshop and where a lot of people on this webinar were at. And we just literally concluded the MAFWA workshop. So the NIFWA workshop will be in April. Um, that, those regional events and the reason I'm describing them is it, it's a great place to talk about the tactical programs that are working, what are other states doing, and have that exchange at a regional level. Usually we see some trends at the regional level that also um, are valuable to notice and work on together at, a, at that level and address. Uh, also on the docket, there is a R3 coordinator training that RBFS is leading the development of. Um, the Council and WMI, Wildlife Management Institute, did meet with RBFS in the MAT team, the Management Assistance team, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. So a lot of people in the room to identify the topics we need to address um, and have better explanation and understanding of, and then provide a training of that to um, offer to our, our new R3 coordinators so that they can invest in it, understand the topics, and really get the training they need to move forward. Again, that, I think that event is June 11th to the 14th. Um, and that, just to explain the difference between that event and the R3 Symposium, R3 Symposium is a, a cross-section of people we want in the room to develop those strategies and advance the conversation. Um, specifically for the training that RBFS leading, that's more of a coordinator-specific event. There might only be 50 to 60 spots for that training, whereas the symposium we hope to draw about 300 to 400 people. And so on the docket for the next six months, I think those are the events that you should consider. Cyrus and Marty, is there anything that you would add? Nope, just those. Okay. And if you're not familiar on the R3 website, uh, R3 community, we list the events. So this is a twofold. Keep updated, you can export those to your calendar on iOS or Gmail. But you, if you have an event coming up, please also let us know so that we can inform the rest of the community. And you can just email those to Marty Cyrus or post it yourself. You can always create your own events too. And then Tim O'Neill, you have a question. Is there a national goal for new hunters by a certain date? And is there a shared definition of a new hunter? Um, okay, that's a two-pronged question. Uh, as far as the national goal, um, we have not established a goal yet. Uh, we are focusing in on the process and identifying things that need to be adapted to in, in innovation to increase participation numbers, but we haven't set a, a goal uh, for a multitude of reasons that we can talk about offline. Uh, we're more focusing on the process and the advancement of um, the people on the ground doing the work, changing the way agencies think about this, causing that organizational change, really hitting that home. We do know from different research that's been released, so the National Hunting, um, Hunting Fishing, and Wildlife Recreation Survey, uh, some numbers were released from that. We expect new, the complete package of numbers from that survey to be released in the coming weeks. That will give us an idea of where we have come from and how many different changes we've seen in participation numbers, um, but it doesn't define that goal where we need to get back to. And as far as the other part of the question, it says a shared definition of a new hunter. Um, I'd highly recommend that you check out um, two different tools. It's the Outdoor Recreation Adoption Model, and part of the R3 efforts and the goals of that is to either get somebody going outdoors for the first time or get them to be more active in the outdoors. So using that ORAM, you can understand what a new hunter would be to you and which phases that would apply to you. And then on the other side, I'd encourage you to check out the National Scorecard, Hunting and Shooting Sports Scorecard. Um, that is available through an appendix of the National Hunting and Shooting Sports Action Plan. That defines the different people who um, would show up in your license database and kind of helps you understand from your data what that might look like for you. So I hope that helps. 
Um, one other tidbit we'd like to share with you is about the future of the hunting and fishing project that the council invested in last year um, through our partners. Uh, we conducted a research project with Dr. Lauren Chase of Chase and Chase Consulting to update the trend video that I think a lot of people are familiar with that showed the shifting participation rates across the cohort. Um, we will be releasing the uh, re results of that project. We had 26 states participate in the second go around, and we greatly appreciate that. If there's a state that participated, they will get the analysis back on the six different categories that we looked at. And what that project was doing was to determine the difference in participation rates to see age period cohort, basically looking at the data and saying, what out of all those topics influenced participation rates the most? And what can we use from that information and understanding of it to apply to our free efforts? And so there's a lot of great information both at the national and state level that we'll be releasing. And you can expect that information prior to the North American Natural Wildlife Natural Resource Conference, which is in the end of March. And I think that, to, to connect the dots there, Tim, I think that'll give you a better understanding of the goal for a new hunter. It's not necessarily to get a million new hunters out there, but to also get different segments of hunters out there, because what we see is there's different shifting cohorts and participation rate. And so for us to have the retention aspect and the long-term strategy we might want to consider those factors in too. So rather than a million hunters overall, we might go for a million, 500,000 hunters in the millennial category and 500,000 hunters in say the baby boomer category. There's different strategies that we can use and infer for data so that we just don't have to pick one certain amount by a certain date, but rather develop our strategies around that. So. Sam, I'll just add too that the um, while maybe the community has not um, set a specific goal for X number of hunters by a certain year, kind of like RBFF has done with their 60 and 60, um, there are groups out there that have set their own goals um, based off of uh, research that they've either looked at or um, numbers that they they feel that they can help um, maintain. Um, so just be aware that those are out there as well. Mm -hmm. Definitely, thank you, Cyrus. Okay, so Nancy, another question is, is there a forum to find out what other states have tried and what has worked with regards to R3? I realize each state might be dealing with different issues, but it would be helpful to get an idea what states have tried, short of contacting each of the coordinators. Um, I'll say some, something sorry. real quick. Tim. I was going to head. Yeah, go for it. Sorry. <laughs> I'll just say that the um, the form in which we hope there to be is the R three community. Um, we we hope that uh, different state agencies and different entities will will take what they're doing, um, whether it be a huge success or a big failure, and help drive that conversation. Um, nationally so that people in other states can see what's going on. Um, we hope to kind of maybe stimulate some of the, that conversation and some of more more uh, program posting um, in 2018, but I would say that that's an easy form right there, but, um, aside from having an actual list put together already. Um, the, that's what the community is there for, to help drive those conversations. Yeah, any, uh, any questions that you, you are having or looking for, um, if you post in there, people, people are commenting, people are, you know, if, if people know who you should be talking to, they'll link you up. Um, it's, a really great, it's a really great way to uh, see those ideas. You can, you can go back and search for anything in the top search bar that you're, you know, any keywords that you're looking for to see if somebody's already posted about that. You know, if you're looking for, a, you know, any information on a family fishing night or something, you can search that and then see what other people have posted or done in the past. Um, that's really what we're hoping the, the website becomes is just kind of a poster board of what's going on, what's working, what's not. And then uh, myself and Sam and Cyrus, we kind of go through and uh, pick out the good the good ones, the really good conversations, and we put them in a newsletter every week. So that's that's really the whole goal of the uh, R3 community right there. Exactly. And um, RBFS has set a model that we've considered doing as well, where they do their one-sheeters on programs. And as we're talking with our partners at the state level and in the NGO world, um, we're trying to develop those resources. 
Um, I think something we're kind of proud of is we'll develop ways to, to engage people in conversation. We've done things like mic'd up in coffee hours and I literally just say webinar for people to hop on. We're trying to fit, find what our community likes. It's this special little recipe we have to find to get the community to engage. And um, we're constantly improving and innovating to see, okay, that works, but from your feedback, how can we adapt and make it more impactful? So if you have ideas on how we can stimulate more conversation, we welcome those. Um, some of our best uh, contributors have said, brought out, we would like this if you did this. And that's very helpful for us, that feedback. Because um, with managing a community for 1,300 people now, there's a bunch of different ideas out there. But oftentimes, we, if we don't hear from you, we can't act on those. So consider us open in books and open conversations. Um, our emails are readily available for that reason. And I see Tim is um, typing a question. Oh, a oh, Thanks, Tim. We appreciate that. <laughs> and so here's a question to the community um, or to the people on this webinar. As you're working on R3 and you're looking at 2018, we hope we'll see you in Lincoln. Um, but we're also hoping that um, some of the topics that we've been told are the highlights are the ones that y'all are working on too and eyeing up. So of the group out there, um, how many of you are going to be tackling mentoring this year in some way, shape, or form? And you can just type in I am a yes or no. What? Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, fantastic. Okay. We are Yay. So our sources are good, guys, okay? <laughs> our sources are good. I think this, this <clears> is going to crash. There's so many people typing. Okay. No plans at this point. Sorry. Thanks, Clark. <laughs> okay. Um, we, we're hearing that. We know that, that that is a top priority for a lot of people. And we see that topic there. That's, that's a topic that also our CEO and president is very um, <laughs> passionate about. And so we're trying to work with our partners um, and trying to work with WMI and our, our consulting partners um, to see where we need to go with that topic. So one of the visions that's been given to us by the board and our CEO is that we're the facilitator. We're not going to go out there and create a mentoring program. However, how we would address that problem is if we can find a bunch of states that are working on it together, bring them together, facilitate that conversation, and help them be more efficient and impactful and learn together as a community. That's the role we fill, and that's the role we see for ourselves. And knowing that just you know Alaska, Pennsylvania, um, Utah. A couple other states are addressing that. We, that's why we try to stay in tune with pe what people are demanding so we can address a question just like this. And so uh, as we move forward uh, for mentoring, we'll be sharing, we'll probably have a couple um, different webinars or podcasts or mic'd up sessions on this because we want to collect your feedback, just kind of a listening session. So be on the lookout for that. And another question for you. Um, to check out and see if it's on the top of your mind, how many of you are going to tackle some kind of evaluation, whether that be implementing your evaluation strategy um, and offering in-person surveys, or at least understanding your metrics and seeing where your data trends lie? Um, how many, eval for sure, okay, yeah, just, just say yes. I think we're seeing where the focus is, okay. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So evaluation, mentoring, and then the, the doozy. How many of you will be hitting marketing? Anyone tackling the topic of marketing? Marketing, yes. Marketing, yes. Marketing, yes. Okay. Oops, you but not sure yet. Okay, yep. Yes. Capital letters, okay. Definitely All right. Yeah. Wait till they keep rolling in. So we feel like we're on the right path then. The marketing controls and recruitment branch and staff. Okay, fair enough. Is there any topic aside from those three big ones? We know that's big and there's a multitude of topics under there that we haven't addressed. Is what, what are the needs out there that we haven't talked about or that you see coming up that you just need assistance with? Yeah. 
you can't tell me that we're right on the right path with all three of those guys. Okay, if, there you go. <laughs> if you come up with ideas, um, please call us. Please text us, email us, anything. Um, like I said, it's, it's only, our community is only as good as the people who are involved in it. Marty's defined that, Cyrus has defined that. That is truly how we feel. So let us know what you think and what you need. Um, we really are excited with the opportunities that are presented to us through 2018, from the extra industry involvement to the National Archery Symposium to maybe even a new iteration of the National Archery Plan. The opportunities are here. We have the staff. We have the boots on the ground now to get the work done. Um, we just need to collaborate and work together to move forward. So Cyrus and Marty, do you guys have any other comments to wrap this up? No, I was just going to say that, that um, you know, everything that we've talked about in the, in the National Symposium and everything is, is we think will we'll hopefully culminate in some type of, like you said, Sam, National Plan 2.0 or, or um, you know, we don't want that document to just kind of be a stale document. We want it to grow and evolve over time. Exactly. And I would just add that uh, the community is there for a resource uh, for you guys. Please utilize the heck out of it. You know, uh, post, comment, uh, get in fights. Who knows? We just want really good conversations on there. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah, please, uh, engagement is our focus in 2018, at least, on my end. Agreed. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, thank you all for joining us today. Um, we do have a survey link. If you don't want to post your comments or ideas on the forum, but you'd like to submit it uh, via the electronic survey, we always take that, too. We appreciate that. And the people that registered for this webinar were also um, receive an email with that survey link in it. Uh, we'll be available through the Archery Community and email, and until the next webinar, oh, the next webinar is all with the Archery Trade Association, featuring Josh Gold and Dan Forster and a number of their other staff, and I'm going to grab the date right now, um, and it is on February 13th at 1 Eastern. Um, we are very excited for this webinar and to engage with the Archery Trade Association, which is an industry group. Um, representing a multitude of different industry uh, aspects on the archery side. So we expect some great feedback and ideas coming from this, as well as opportunities for states to engage with them. So join us on the 13th. We'll have registration on the archery community on that um, here, here quickly. So thank you, and have a great evening, everyone. We appreciate you tuning in. Have a good day. Perfect. See you guys. Phone and email is always on. Thanks. The leader has disconnected. The conference will be terminated in five minutes.